Here I have a bookstore application, and currently there are no books, so let's create one. Now all I can do here is give a book a name, but I also want to be able to assign multiple authors to a book, so there should be a many-to-many -many association between authors and books that I can edit in the form here. Now you can see in the book model that I already have this association set up. A book has many authors through a join model called authorships, so this is a pretty standard has many through association. So the question is, how do we set up this form so we can assign authors to the book? One option is to use checkboxes like I show in episode 17. Now the problem is I have a lot of authors here and managing this through checkboxes just isn't practical. Now one great solution to this problem is chosen. This allows you to turn a long select menu into one that the user can search through and filter out results. Now you can also use this on a many to many association. So if there's a multi-select menu, uh, it will just turn that into one where the user can select multiple items and even filter them out by just typing them in. It works great. So here I'll be using Chosen to assign multiple authors to a book. Now the first step is to create a multi-select menu for the authors. So here's the view template for this book form. And to save us some time, I'm just going to paste in the content for this multi-select field. Uh, I'm using collection select here on the author IDs attribute, which is set up with the has many association and uh, listing out all the authors ordered by name. And notice I'm using the second options hash here, which is going to be the HTML options to set multiple to true to make it a multi-select menu. And then inside of the book model, I need to update this adder accessible line so that I can set that author IDs attribute through the form, like that. So now reloading this page, I have a multi-select menu where I can choose multiple authors. So let's create a book here. And that works. And even editing this uh, automatically selects the previous authors so I can add and remove them. And that works as well. So now I just need to use Chosen to turn this into a prettier way to filter out the authors. Now there is a gem available to make it easy to integrate Chosen into the Rails asset pipeline. Go into the gem file inside of the assets group, add the gem chosen rails inside of here, and then run the bundle command to install it. And then in the application JS file, add a line in here to require chosen jQuery. And then in the application CSS file, add a line in here to require chosen to set it up. Now I still need to add chosen to the authors field, and I'm going to do that inside of the books coffee script file here. I'll make sure the DOM is loaded. And then I'll grab that book author IDs field and then call chosen on this, which is what that chosen JavaScript plugin provides. And now when I reload this page, it's going to use chosen for selecting the authors. So I can type in a name here to filter out the authors and just add it. Now when I update the book, there's the author added to the book. Now you'll probably want to add some styling to improve the user experience. I'll just paste in some code here to make the author IDs field a little wider. And now reloading the page, it looks much nicer, and it still works great for selecting authors and removing them. Updating it, it works. So as you can see, Chosen is a wonderful way to make a tokenized input field, but it doesn't work well for every situation. What if you have hundreds of thousands of records, you don't want to load all of that into the client side at once. You should probably do some kind of Ajax loading and communication with the server. Now there are some extensions to Chosen for doing this, but I prefer to turn to a different project that's more designed for this scenario. And that is jQuery token input. This will use Ajax as the data source, so it will communicate with the server and fetch the records. So if you have a lot of records, this is a perfect solution. So you get a double feature here in this episode. I'm going to start this project over and show you how to do the same thing using jQuery token input. Now I'll go through this pretty quickly here, so hold on to your seats. First off, I'm going to download the project off of GitHub because it includes some fixes that aren't in the final release. And then off camera, I moved the downloaded JavaScript and CSS files into the vendor assets directory in my Rails application. So now I just need to include them inside of my app assets directory. So inside of my application JS file here, I'm going to just require a jQuery .token input. And then in my application CSS file, I'm going to require the uh, token dash input dash Facebook file because I want to use the Facebook theme here. And then going inside of the form template for the book, I just need to add a new field here for adding the author token. So I'm going to paste this in. It's just a text field for an attribute called author tokens, but I don't have an attribute on the book model for this yet. 
So going inside of my book model, I need to make getter and setter methods for this author tokens attribute. So I'm just going to use attribute reader to make an author tokens getter method, which will just make the view work. And then I still need to make the setter method called author tokens. Now the question is, how does this work? Well, a string is going to be passed into this method containing the author IDs separated by commas. So I'm going to need to parse this string and set the book's author IDs based off of it. So I'll pass in the IDs as an argument and set the author IDs for this book to those IDs split by a comma. Now there's one more thing to do here and that is to make the author token settable through the form through mass assignment by adding it to this attribute accessible call at the top. There we go. Okay, so what I have so far is just an author's text field here where I can enter in a comma separated value of IDs. So let's turn this into a token input field. Now going into my book's coffee script file, I'm going to paste in the code necessary to do this. All I'm doing here is grabbing that book author tokens field and calling token input on it, and then passing in what I want the path to be to load the JSON data when it does the searching. So that's at authors.json, and then setting the theme to Facebook. And there are a variety of other options you can pass in here as well. Check out the documentation for details. Now to get this working, I need to make this path respond with some JSON data containing the matching authors. So I already have an authors controller set up here with an index action here. So I'll make a respond to block so that it responds with both HTML format and a JSON format. And for that, I will render out the JSON format for the authors uh, re records. So now when I reload this page, I get a token field here where I can type something in and I get authors in response. But one problem here is that the authors aren't being filtered out based on what I type in the text field. So I can do this with a where clause on the authors, just making sure the name is like uh, the query parameter, which is going to be params Q passed in here. So that's what uh, the token input plugin does. And I'll use percent signs here so that it does a like match. So now when I type into this field, it's going to filter the authors based off of what I type. So now I'll try submitting this with a name, creating a book, and it works. There are our authors. But now when I try editing this, no authors are passed in here. So I'm going to have to preload the data somehow. I'm going to do this through a data attribute on the input field here. So pass in data, and I'll call it load, and then pass in the book.authors, so this will encode them into the JSON format automatically for me. And then in my book coffee script file, I can pass in an option to pre-populate this based off of that JSON data, which is inside of the book's uh, author tokens field under the data load attribute. Reload the page, and there we go. There are the authors that are already set pre-populated. So now this token input field is pretty much complete. It will now fetch the author names from our application. However, what if we tried to type in an author name which doesn't exist? It would be nice to be able to create this directly in line here. To do this, I need to have this JSON response return something for creating a new author if nothing was found. Now there's quite a bit of logic involved in this, so I'm going to move it into the author's model on a class method called tokens and pass in the query into there. So going into the author model, I'm going to paste in the code for this tokens class method, and this performs the same query we had before, but this time if no authors are found, it's going to return this special response for creating a new author with that given name, and is passing the ID in with this special string, which I will need to parse on the receiving end. And that happens in the book model where I'm receiving the author tokens, so I'm going to also move this into a class method on the author model called IDs from uh, tokens and then pass in the tokens as an argument into here. So back in the author model, I'll paste in the code for this class method as well, IDs from tokens, and I'm going to do a find and replace here for this special string which is up here, and then if it finds it, it's going to create a new author using that name that's passed in uh, through the parentheses here. And then so it'll just take that ID and replace this string with that ID value and then split it off of the commas again. So with that change, if I try to make a new author which doesn't exist, it's going to offer to create a new author, and then when I submit this, it'll make that new author record, and then I can edit it and is back to just that new author. So that is how you can use jQuery token input to manage a many-to-many -many association in one field. 
Now, uh, one point I want to make here is that I happen to have a name attribute on my author model, so it just worked fine to return just the author JSON response. But if you have another attribute, maybe title or something you want to use for the token input, you can set the property to search option and set that to title or whatever you want the attribute to be. A quick note before I go, there is a project called Select2 which is based off of Chosen, but it has many more features such as Ajax loading. Now I felt it was too early in development to cover it here, but it's definitely worth keeping an eye on and uh, checking out. Well that's it for this episode on using Chosen or jQuery token inputs. Thanks for watching.